Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Online Course. Today we're starting an exciting project. Leaf disease detection using deep learning. Since this is a big project, we'll learn it in three parts. Part 1. Setup, dataset, and pre-processing. Part 2. Model building. Part 3. Training, evaluation, and predictions. By the end of this first video, you'll have your dataset ready, pre-processed, and visualized, so we can start building models in part 2. Let's get started. In this video, we will install TensorFlow and set up our collab environment, mount Google Drive to access our dataset, import necessary libraries, load process, and visualize our leaf disease dataset. By the end of this video, your dataset will be ready for model building. Stay tuned for part two, where we will start building deep learning models using VGG16, VGG19, and Efficient Net B4. Now, let's search for our project on Google. I'll type leaf disease detection, here we see some results. Let's click on it. And here we have the full project page. It includes everything we need, project description, workflow, all the resources, and even hands-on code with playground support. This makes it very easy to follow along step by step. Before coding, here's the workflow in brief. Dataset. Load images of healthy and diseased leaves from Kaggle. Pre-processing. Normalize and augment images for better learning. Model. Build CNN models using transfer learning. Training. Train the model on prepared dataset. Evaluation. Test accuracy and predict new leaf images. Next, let's move to dataset preparation. Install TensorFlow. First, we are installing TensorFlow, the main library we will use for deep learning. The exclamation mark here tells Collab to run this as a shell command. Once this runs, TensorFlow will be ready to use in our notebook. TensorFlow is installed and ready. Mount Google Drive. In this step, we connect Google Drive to our Collab environment. This allows us to access datasets and files stored in Drive. When we run this, it asks for authorization, and after that, all our Drive files become available inside the folder content drive. Google Drive mounted. Now files are accessible in Collab. Import libraries. Now we are importing all the libraries we need. We have tools for handling files, arrays, image processing, deep learning models, visualization, and evaluation. This will allow us to load images, build neural networks, train them, and visualize the results. Libraries are imported and ready for use. Dataset paths. Here we define the path of our dataset inside Google Drive. The dataset folder contains two subfolders, one for training data and another for validation data. Using os.path.join, we create two variables, train folder and test folder, to store the exact paths of these subfolders. Dataset paths stored for training and validation. Extract categories. Now we prepare our dataset categories. First, we set the image size to 128 by 128 pixels which means all images will be resized to this resolution. Then we create an empty list called Categories and loop through the folders inside the training directory. Each folder name represents one disease class, and we append it to the list. Finally, we print out the category names to confirm. Data Processing Function Here we define a function called Process Data that loads and processes images from a given folder. For each class, it creates the full path, finds its numeric label, and loops through all images. Each image is read using OpenCV, resized to the target size, 
and stored along with its label in a data list. We also keep account of how many images each class contains. At the end, the function returns both the process data and the counts. Function ready to process training and validation datasets. Process training data. Now we call the function for the training folder. This processes all training images, resizes them, assigns labels, and counts them. Finally, we print the total number of training samples to verify the dataset size. Training data processed. Total number of training images printed. Plot training class distribution. Here we define a plotting function to visualize how many images exist in each class. It creates a bar chart with classes on the x-axis and image counts on the y-axis. We then call this function for the training dataset to quickly check if our dataset is balanced across categories. Bar chart of training data distribution displayed. This bar chart visualizes the class distribution of the training dataset. Each bar represents a different leaf disease category, and the height of the bar shows the number of images in that class. By examining this chart, we can quickly see whether the training data is balanced or if some classes dominate while others are underrepresented. Ensuring a roughly balanced dataset helps the model learn effectively across all classes. Process validation data. Now we process the validation dataset the same way. This ensures images are resized, labeled, and counted. At the end, we print the total number of validation images. Validation data processed. Total number of validation samples printed. Plot validation class distribution. Here we call the same plotting function, but this time for the validation dataset. This shows us how many validation images belong to each class and lets us check if the validation set is balanced. Bar chart of validation data distribution displayed. This bar chart shows the class distribution of our validation dataset. Each bar represents a different plant disease category and the height of the bar indicates how many images belong to that class. By looking at this chart, we can quickly see whether the validation data is balanced or if some classes have significantly more or fewer samples than others. A balanced validation set is important because it ensures that the model's performance evaluation is fair across all classes. Prepare training arrays. Next, we prepare the training arrays. First, we separate the images and labels from the training data into two lists. Then we convert them into number py arrays for faster computation. The image array is reshaped to include the number of samples, the height and width, and the three color channels. Labels are stored as a one-dimensional array. Finally, we print the shapes to confirm everything looks correct. Training images converted into a 4D number py array and labels stored as a 1D array with their shapes displayed. Model evaluation on validation dataset in this section. We are preparing our test dataset for evaluation. First, we loop through the validation data and separate the images as X-test and their corresponding labels as Y-test. Then, we convert both into number PY arrays so that our model can process them efficiently. The image data is reshaped into the format and stored as float32 type. After that, we print the shapes of X-test and Y-test just to confirm everything is correct. Finally, we normalize the pixel values by dividing by 255.0 so that they lie between 0 and 1, which makes the model work faster and more accurately. Show sample images. Finally, we visualize one random image from each class to get a quick idea of our dataset. We define a function that loops through all categories, picks a random image from each folder, and displays it in a grid with the class name as the title. When we call the function, 
It generates a neat visual overview of our training dataset. A grid of randomly selected sample images from each class is displayed. The images show one random sample from each leaf disease class in the training dataset. Each image is labeled with its class name, providing a visual overview of the different types of leaves and conditions in the dataset. This helps us see the variations, colors, shapes, and patterns in each class. So far in part one, we have installed TensorFlow and set up our collab environment, mounted Google Drive and accessed the dataset, imported all necessary libraries, loaded the training and validation data, processed and resized images, assigned labels, visualized sample images, and class distribution. Now our dataset is ready for building deep learning models. In part two, we'll start building powerful models using VGG16, VGG19, and EfficientNet B4. We'll freeze pre-trained layers, add custom dense layers, and get our models ready for training. So make sure you don't miss the next part. If you found part one useful, hit the like button and subscribe for the next part. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions about dataset preparation or pre-processing.